Welcome to Aquatics by Nature. I'm sure many of you have wondered, how have I been able to maintain this low tech, no water change on fertilized aquarium for the last 28 years? Especially considering I keep everything really simple and very low maintenance. So today I'm gonna to focus on how selecting some of the right plants can have a really enormous influence on this. Plant choice is one of those subjects that I've always found is critically important and yet it seems to be one of those subjects that's somewhat overlooked within the hobby and there are certainly over the years a few things that I've learned that seem to always lead to a successful long-term natural aquarium and there are also a few things that I've personally always found tend to be problematic in this respect so I'd like to try and explain some of my experiences and sort of personal preferences as to the way I like to do things and some of the things that I've sort of found out over the years. So I guess I should probably start by answering a sort of common question, or maybe a little bit of what I would actually consider a, a slight misconception in actual fact. And that simple question is, are slow growing plants low maintenance? You would think, wouldn't you, on the face of it, that slow means easy and sort of ultra low maintenance. But in the context of an aquarium like this, I would definitely say that slow isn't always a good thing. I've always found this is particularly true of new tanks. And when I say new tanks, I mean tanks that are less than a year or so old. And the reason for this is really quite simple. In that with a new tank, I would consider that growth is absolutely king. And especially when you're trying to actually balance and settle the new system down. And you'll find that slow growing plants simply don't suck up enough nutrients in these systems and subsequently they can be incredibly prone to getting smothered in algae and really looking quite terrible and they can actually die very often and this is especially true if you have very very strong lighting you know if they're exposed to a very high level and they simply don't have a fast enough metabolism to actually be able to compete with algae let alone actually help to sort of balance new systems. So in my experience, new tanks absolutely need as much fast growing plant material as is actually possible to get into them. And this is not only just to maintain and create good water quality, but actually to help sort of fend off and fight algae. Um, you might actually notice, and especially if you've been watching my videos for a little while, how incredibly algal free this tank always is. Um, it's one of those things that once you get it right, it's actually relatively simple to maintain a very low maintenance natural aquarium with really absolutely no unsightly algae. You know, you have to really look for the algae to see it. It's, it's not obvious at all. And remember, this is despite not having changed any significant amount of water since 2010. So, I guess maybe the question sort of becomes, can you grow slow growing, low maintenance plants in a mature natural aquarium? Well, to my mind, this is where it actually starts to get quite interesting because once you've gone through what I would describe as the sort of biological chaos of the first year or two, as your tank is actually settling down and actually maturing, everything kind of changes from this point that the whole system tends to shift to a, a much slower, um, sort of more sustainable level. It's something I've referred to before as, I kind of describe it as, as phase two. Um, I'm not gonna go into huge detail over that here. Um, I did actually make a, a little video last Christmas called An Aquarium is for Life, Not Just for Christmas. So if anyone's interested in more detail of how tanks run in and how you get the different phases. I'll, I'll put a little link in the description anyway. Anyway, filling a new aquarium with slow growing plants in order to make the tank low maintenance, I've always found in my experience, it's, it's one of those things that more often than not needs, leads to issues. Um, so certainly in the, in the context of, certainly a, the sort of level of maturity of a tank um, and the kind of overall balance of a tank it, is absolutely critical here. And it's only really once your system is 
really well balanced and really mature. And by that, I always mean a, a tank that is a, at least a year or so, so old and one where all the water parameters are, are constantly good, you know, sort of little or low nitrate. Um, and also the tank really needs to be essentially algal free. It's only really then that I would definitely say you can start to use more slow growing plants and sort of more low maintenance plants in the aquarium. And for those of you who are familiar with this tank, you, you'll know that I'm a big fan of cryptochorines and they've carpeted this tank beautifully over the last sort of 28 years. But I should point out that this wasn't always the case. This is something that has evolved over a period of time. Uh, the tank wasn't filled with cryptochorines initially, that there were just a one or two. And basically I've just allowed them to spread and sort of evolve as the aquarium became sort of mature enough and when the time was sort of appropriate. So I guess the, the next question really is, can you use these slow growing, low maintenance plants in new aquariums at all? Well, my answer strangely would actually be absolutely yes. But because of the things I've just outlined, I would suggest they need to be used really in the min minority. You don't want lots of them. And as I said earlier, I consider growth is king in new systems, certainly to settle new systems down and for them to, to run very smoothly anyway. So providing there's enough fast growing plants in the sort of initial mix of plants, then I'm quite happy to add a small percentage of slow growing things into that mix. Now, fortunately for us aquarists, many of the slow growing plants actually require very little light. So they'll do absolutely fine, even if they're completely underneath the canopy of fast growing things. And as a, a sort of a, a example again, I like to actually add my cryptocorins at the beginning when I'm sort of setting up new tanks. Um, and this is even if the tank is a, an absolute jungle and completely covered with floating plants. And the main reason for this is that many slow growing plants and once a growing cryptocorins are a brilliant example of this, they can take a considerable period of time to actually establish and get their roots down and get a, you know, a really good footing before they can actually start to actually spread. So in this respect, the sooner you actually get them started, the better. Um, but it's only really, as I say, as the tank matures, that you can actually then allow these plants to actually take over a little bit more. So you, you can really just, uh, it's just a matter of sort of slowly thinning out some of the other plants and naturally allowing more of the slow growing plants to actually take up, you know, just a little bit more of the sort of real estate as it were. So I guess this, guess this kind of brings me to the next question is, can you grow an aquarium that is entirely full of slow growing, low maintenance plants? And that's even if you have a, a really mature aquarium like this. And by this I mean literally just slow growing plants. So just maybe Cryptocorines, Anubius, maybe Bucephalandrus, something like that. Well, I should firstly point out that there are infinite variables here, but in my experience, the chances of having a, a really healthy, long-term natural aquarium using just these slow growing plants is really quite minimal. It's not something that I would recommend and it's certainly not something that I've found that is really a successful thing to do. Um, one of the most consistent things I've learned from all the aquariums I've had over the years, and when I say consistent, I, I really literally mean 100% consistent. And that is simply that healthy long-term natural aquariums, and certainly all the ones that I've owned, have always been the ones where I have plants in them that grow fast enough that I'm able to remove excess plant material regularly. And by regularly, I mean at least every sort of week or two. Without this ability to remove this excess plant material regularly, I've always found that sooner or later, the water quality will start to deteriorate. And this may be over quite a long period of time, but it always seems to be consistent and always seems to happen. I find that eventually 
the nitrate level will start to creep up the TDS level also will start to creep up and you can see that the tank is sort of gradually deteriorating now obviously at this point you could simply go back to actually changing water to correct things and that's a perfectly valid thing to do um, but this will not negate the fact that these slow growing plants have comparatively poor defences against algae so even if you're able to maintain the water quality by changing water you're still much more likely to encounter algal problems so as this channel is actually based around sort of balancing and maintaining these natural style aquariums without the need for water changes I kind of feel it's appropriate to share my experiences in the respect of not doing water changes so okay I think probably the final question as it were for today is how have I managed to man maintain and balance this tank for 28 years with basically no water changes since 2010 and especially considering that the vast majority of the plants in this tank are actually slow growing plants well the answer is actually pretty simple and I've kind of answered it anyway but I will continue um, firstly this aquarium is absolutely rammed with plants and it always is wall to wall plants and this is something that I've always found is really important especially when it comes to keeping algae at bay plant mass is one of those things that is absolutely key here and it's probably one of those subjects that I actually need to do a whole video about but that's a topic for another day anyway I like to make sure that my slow growing plants are always in combination with something which grows fast enough that I have to remove it or the excess of it anyway at least every couple of weeks and over the years I've utilized various different plants to fulfill this task um, but I always come back to the the same sort of reliable ones that I've found consistently enable me to maintain tanks with literally zero water changes um, the first one which I'm sure you're familiar with is the water lettuce in here the, the floating plant um, floating plants are fantastic for this because they're able to utilize atmospheric CO2 so they're not limited by CO2 like plants that are underwater in your tank um, you can actually use any floating plant um, water lettuce is simply the one that does the best in my tank but even very common things like duckweed is absolutely brilliant for this and I actually had duckweed in this tank for many many years and as some of you may remember it only actually disappeared when I let the water soften too much and the water lettuce actually took over and um, my other go-to plants are, again are ones that you're probably familiar with is a, a simply just stem plants and bulia and guppy grass both of these plants are incredibly easy really simple to maintain and you can do so without constantly having to replant them and um, all you literally do is just remove the tallest stems and they just keep coming back uh, this is something which is actually quite rare amongst stem plants which again is something I've touched on before but it's very much one of the reasons that I choose them because although you could say they're a little bit more maintenance in that you have to remove them regularly they are the quickest and the easiest to do this uh, apart from obviously your, your floating plants so I guess I, I should really sort of sum up a little bit by simply saying yes slow growing plants can help you create a natural style aquarium but in my experience they have little or no use in new tanks and the only reason that I really see to put them in new tanks is to actually get them established sort of for the future as it were and only really then when your tank is properly mature has proper perfect water quality and is really algal free and then you could actually allow them to become a, a bigger part of the picture and help to give you that little bit less maintenance but even so I always found that you need to keep a really high plant mass and most important of all it's essential to keep them in combination with something that you can crop really regularly it's only really then that I found that I can consistently run tanks without the need for water changes and really quite indefinitely um, it's just a wonderful way of running an aquarium and something that I think is is well worth sort of striving for if that kind of thing sort of appeals to you 
Anyway, if you'd like to know more about my naturally balanced, no water changed, unfertilized aquariums, I'd be eternally grateful if you'd subscribe and give me a like. You can also check out my playlists, but most importantly, enjoy your aquarium. Don't be a slave to it. Thanks for watching.